Hiya folks, it's me. Um, sorry if I sound not not so good. I had a massive asthma episode last Tuesday. Uh, a bit scary because I woke up and I thought I had the Covid. Uh, coughing like a trooper for about two and a half hours. And uh, I thought, oh my God, here we go. And uh, it was a bad one. And I sort of took a gamble and I thought, no, nah, this is asthma. So I've been on the inhaler ever since. And I think I just got a bad cold um, and it sort of triggered a small attack. But uh, uh, in England at the moment, I don't know if you're aware, <coughs> we've been on lockdown for the last four weeks. All the pubs are shut, the shops are shut, everything's shut basically. Um, you can go to a chemist, you can go to a um, supermarket, but you can't do much else. Uh, we come out of lockdown next week, on the 2nd I think it is, or 3rd of December. The trouble is they've given us all tears, so the shop's open, but you can't go to the pub. You can't, you have, if you go to a restaurant, you have to have a substantial meal with your pint. I don't know what the diff, what they're playing at, it's all gone, gone stupid now. But basically it's just like being on lockdown. So if you're on tier three, which is the worst one, you're on full lockdown. Or if you're on tier two like me, you can do certain things and all this stuff. It's just got out of hand now. So uh, if you're the asthmatics out there, I feel for you. I know what it's like, and it must be terrible for them. But um, see what happens after Christmas. It can't be any worse than the year before anyway. So I just th thought I'd do one of these um, videos about what's spinning or what I'm listening to. I've just uh, pulled out a few bits that I want to talk about. I listen to a lot of records. Well, I ain't got much else to do. And uh, but this is just sort of a, six or seven of them I wanted to. I've got you know what to talk about. But in the UK at the moment, the Metal Mickey did an article on this, and I haven't had time to pull mine yet because when I got mine, I got sick. And uh, it was this uh, this magazine's come out, Fistful of Metal. Now this metal, uh, this metal, this magazine looks really really good. But the simple reason is it actually has got heavy metal in there like Motorhead, Raven, Iron Maiden, Armored Saint, Masters of R Monsters of Rock, all this stuff. And all the bands I actually know as metal. Um, it's got Havoc in it, ne Necrophobic, whatever that means, Sacred Reich, Venom. And it's a sort of heavy metal uh, uh, magazine I embrace. You know, it's got a bit of everything for everybody's taste. I'm not going to show you it, because I might be infringing some copyright. It's got Motorhead on the front cover. Tell you the truth, I'm not really a magazine person. I like classic rock. I like a couple of them. But uh, Krang, I haven't read for nearly, what, 50, it used to be good in the 80s, but that went to pot after the grunge scene went. went. I just don't like it. Uh, I just, I can't associate with them. Because half the bands, I don't sort of... I think this is new metal. And I know some people love it, but it's just not my... Being an old metal head, old school metal head, I just can't associate with it, you know what I mean? It's just totally weird. But yeah, I think this magazine will tick all the boxes. Uh, it's a quarterly one as well. I think you get four a year. Um, but uh, it looks a great read. I can't wait to read mine. And uh, I will read it probably today, I'll have a look through it. And uh, yeah, it just looks great. If you're into sort of the Iron Maiden, the Ravens, you get a bit of everything, sort of 70s, 80s, 90s, instead of everything, all the magazine being on one subject. Uh, there's a great record collecting mag. Uh, I, don't, I won't call it great, I, I don't read that. It's all right if you're a prog rock. But you know, you've got these old guys, older than me, trying to tell young guys um, how to be cool. It's just creepy, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to like that magazine. Uh, Fistful of Metal, it's called. I hope we get it all over the world anyway. Uh, more good news in the Lamming household. As you know, with this COVID, so I call it, or whatever you want to call it, all uh, gigs have been cancelled. And uh, I got a text to say that I can't see Michael Schenker this year. Now, his support band were Terrorvision. I know Metal Mickey likes them, but I've never really... I, I, I didn't, they didn't sort of float my boat. Um, so I think Metal Mickey was talking about them. I checked them, checked them out. I heard one song, and it wasn't for me. So Terrorvision was supposed to be um, their support. Anyway, that they've cancelled, 
and the gigs being put back to next October. And can you imagine my shock that Doro is now supporting Michael Schenker? Yes, Doro Pesh. And I, it's like going to see Elvis. She's my favourite, one of my favourite metal singers of all time. I was absolutely shocked. She's a support act to Michael Schenker. I, think, I hope it's more of an even sort of uh, concert. They do sort of an hour each, hour and a half each, rather than her just do 10 minutes. Uh, she's too big a star for that sort of stuff. So I think that I just can't wait till next October now. Um, I hope, you know, everything gets back, you know, to normal again. But uh, it's just really, really good. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, Doro Pesh, man, flippy neck. It's like going to see Elvis or Jimi Hendrix for me. It's a big deal. And talking of Doro, I was listening to her CD a couple of weeks ago. It must have been an omen or something. But I've been banging this CD out all over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, yeah, you can't beat this record live. And there's a great solo with uh, the bloke out of Iron Maiden. He, they do Fear of the Dark, Blaze Bailey. Uh, fantastic CD. So it sort of all must have, all the stars must have aligned, if you know what I mean. Anyway, the next record I've been listening to used to be my favourite uh, Kiss album. Greg will kill me because he, you know, the first two concert albums, Super Sublime, you know, the uh, Mark One Two. But it's the famous one, the Proco Harlem song that sounds like Proco Harlem's White Shade of Pale. I still like it, but uh, whether it's me famous anymore, it's the trouble is with this lockdown, Lark. You listen to the CD so many times, and you start doubting them. You think, well, that used to be my favourite Kiss CD. Uh, maybe I like this a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, this used to be my favourite Kiss CD. I don't know if it is now. I love Creatures. Great track. But, uh, yeah, we listen to the old Gene Simmons. The next one was a bit of a, a no-brainer. While I've got all this time on my hands, I've been doing a lot of foraging over the internet, seeing what people are saying about Judas Priest and seminal albums. And uh, some of them are so stupid. Uh, they're sort of saying Turbo is one of their best records they've ever recorded. Huh? And uh, so, anyway, um, I, I, I set myself a little mission to uh, to sort of find a seminal album in, in the, my collection that would represent Judas Priest and listen to it. It was just a little... Well, it took me about 10 seconds. but So I came down with two, Defenders and this next one I'm going to show you. And uh, Defenders is my favourite album, but it's got a couple of what I call loose tracks, and you think well, maybe that shouldn't have really gone on that record. But it's still a fantastic album. You can't beat it. But if anybody asks me now what the best Judas Priest album is, I'll have to go with this one, Stay in Class. Um, it's got all my favourite songs on it, um, which, which Beyond the Realms of Death is my favourite Judas Priest song. You can't, you, you can't, it doesn't come much better than that. And the vocals are just out of this world. And uh, you've got Betty by You Better Than Me. I know that's a cover, but I forgot who's done it. And that got me into a bit of trouble, but it's got some cracking stuff on it. Uh, Stay in Class is good as well. So I'm just having a look at Rob Holford, actually, because I came across, you know, he did, um, this is the live, uh, not live, the first one he did, uh, Silent Screams. And uh, I wonder if the Silent Screams off this record, the live version, was a tribute to Beyond the Realms of Death. I was thinking about that as well. You see, when us metalheads start going a bit delirious, we start asking all these questions in our head. And I think that Beyond the Realms of Death off this album um, influenced Silent Screams off this album. You know, because it's, it's sort of bass. It doesn't sound the same. But he's got the sort of the kind person, the angry person, you know what I mean? Th uh, thoughts down the comments, what you think. Um, do you agree or disagree? I'd love to hear your, your views. But anyway, to me, this would be a seminal album of Judas Priest all day long. Um... Also, for the, you could, you know, Defenders of the Faith and Screaming for Vengeance. They, they're, to me, the best anyway. But I love this record. Been listening to it a lot. Now, I thought what I'd do is as well, is I like this record, um, which is the first Fight album. This is phenomenal. It, it, the intro on this is Into the Pit and Nail to the Gun and Life in Black. This is one of the rare um, heavy metal records that it doesn't lit you up for oxygen. It is brutal. Uh, not like death metal brutal or fresh brutal, 
but it's just brutal in its own way. I absolutely love this record, and I haven't stopped playing it. Rob Holford's vocals are amazing, and if you ain't got this in your collection, you're seriously missing something. It's just a fantastic record. And there's no weak tracks on it. There's no tracks like, oh, maybe you should have put that on there. Fantastic record. There's a track listing if you ain't got it. So that's been um, played a lot, you know, over the last sort of COVID period. Now, a record, I mean, I'm not going to talk about too much of this band. It's Canadian DOA. Thanks, Greg. Um, this is uh, before I got to Greg's parcel, and I've been playing this record a lot. Fantastic record. And uh, it, it made me laugh. And that's what I loved about it. They talk about corporates and are they taking over the world. We all know they are. But it also gives you a laugh as well. Just a fantastic record I've been listening to. Greg introduced me to DOA. Fantastic band. Um, if you ain't discovered them, discover them. Now, this uh, record, so the sort of next one, was a Eureka moment. Alice Cooper, I've been playing a lot of as well. Welcome to my nightmare. This, as a best B-side ever, is phenomenal. And I finally got it the other week. I never liked Welcome to My Nightmare uh, because I always found it too stringy. And when they, when they did it live, they sort of put some electric guitars on it. But when you listen to this record, it took me about, I, I remember it came out, it sort of took me like 30 years to understand what he was trying to get over to me. And it was like a eureka moment, you know. And it's an awesome record now. I and mean, it was awesome before. But now I know what Alice was trying to do. It's just, I, I, I'm not going to spoil it for everybody, anybody by telling you. You have to work it out for yourself. But I actually worked it out the other day. And it's just a fantastic record. I take back about saying that Welcome to My Nightmare was stringy. Uh, it's just a fantastic record. It always was. But it sort of, you know, hit me like what he was trying to uh, get to me. And uh, it's just brilliant. Fantastic. Now, the next one I've been listening to, that Crocus, um, Rene, bless him. He helped me with this one. It's Poison. It's, I'm not going to go into detail because this was the band cover one as well because they didn't like the tongue coming out and uh, all this stuff. But I love Poison. Now, P Poison, a fat in the metal community, are fashionable uh, to hate. And it's fair to say when, when I think the C.C. Deville, the guitarist, left, they were a bit... Uh, but he was a phenomenal guitarist. And I, I absolutely loved Poison when they come out. Did some great stuff. Every rose has its thorn. Uh, your mama don't dance. Uh, just just a killer four-piece outfit. And I know Brett Michaels had a bit of a temper, you know, temperamental. Um, but yeah, I'm a fan, and uh, I don't knock this band at all. And uh, I think I think they're really really good. And uh, sorry, I just nearly dumped my CDs on a pile then. Last record I've been listening to, and uh, this is one. This made me laugh as well. This is one of the old R Price security covers as well. They used to put a chip in here, so if you went through the door without it being deactivated, the alarms used to go off. And this is why uh, the, the cover was like this. Uh, I've been listening to this record. Uh, the main fault with this record, it was, was it the songs too long? Uh, I, I like the songs, but I did, I've got to be brutally honest, I do find it a bit tedious to listen to. Um, but, uh, you know, I hadn't really listened to it before, to be brutally honest, before... Um, Mark G with a C. I hope I've got that right, um, Mark. I apologise if I haven't. It's been a long week. But, uh, yeah, I, I love this record. The songs are fantastic. But it's just, is it too long? Mm, you know, yeah, I, did, I must admit, I did find it a bit tedious towards the end. But, uh, yeah, it's Rick Rubin's produced it as well. He did Johnny Cash, and I think he did Neil Diamond as well, if I remember rightly. But yeah, I love the the uh, covers are genius as well. Death Magnetic. Uh, remember the, the science you, it, it, with the magnets and ma uh, iron filings. That's how you got that. Anyway, folks, 14 minutes. Uh, I hope you're all faring well. Uh, spread the love, folks. And uh, I hope everybody stays safe. And, oh, I do hope you stay safe. And I love you all. And uh, love everybody, spread the love, that's what this world needs. Too much hate, I'm afraid, more love required. See ya, folks.